Woman loses custody of daughter in Saudi Arabia after bikini photos are shown to the judge. <sighs> this is so, this is such a, a terrible story. Uh, Bethany Vieira wanted to divorce her husband, and she's an American who married a um, Saudi Arabian citizen in Saudi Arabia. So she is living over in Saudi Arabia, does not have um, her papers yet to technically be um, a Saudi Arabian citizen. Uh, but her daughter that was born out of that marriage is uh, has dual citizenship to the United States and Saudi Arabia. Well, she wanted to divorce her husband because he did drugs and he was abusive. So uh, when she files for a divorce, that was fine. But they started battling over the custody of their four-year-old daughter, Zena. Um, and this is where everything starts going downhill really fast. So the husband shows... The judge pictures of his wife in a bikini and yoga pants with her hair uncovered. And the judge is like, you know, clearly you can't raise a child in our in our culture. Um, so he takes custody away from the mom because it's the dad. Well, the mom shows the judge videos of the dad smoking weed or rolling a joint Um saying, like, fuck Allah or admitting he was an atheist, something along those lines, um, and and verbally abusing the, the wife in front of the daughter. So the judge says, well, clearly this man can't have custody of this child either. So the judge gives custody to the, uh, the man's mom um, in Saudi Arabia. And... Um, it's just, uh, it's it's very sad because even the mom shouldn't have custody of this child because uh, her sister-in-law uh, went before the judge and said that the mother had hit and emotionally abused uh, her and the father of this situation when they were children. So uh, now the child is awarded to this woman simply because... Um, even though she explained to the judge that the photos that were shown of her in the bikini and everything else, that was back when she was in America, that was before she converted to Islam, um, it doesn't matter because she needs the testimony of other men um, to verify what she said to the judge. And that's specifically what, what was told to her. That's specifically what was told to her. Uh, this is a Shiara um, type situation. This is what they mentioned in the article. that um, Sharia? Sharia, yes. Um, so, yeah, so it's it's Sharia law, um, and they she can't testify. Anything she says doesn't matter. Even though she showed video, uh, the husband said that she filmed this and forced him to say those things, and she gave him the drugs. And Wait, that's the man says that she forced him? Mm-hmm. Oh my, okay, this story has so many layers, I don't even know where to start. Okay. Yeah, right? So that's why, sorry if I'm like rambling over here, but... So many levels uh, of fucked up. <laughs> Wait, so, okay, so the the man was Muslim, the woman is from where? The woman is... American. The woman is American, the man was Saudi, right? And they got married, right? And they had a daughter, right? And now everything has gone to shit, right? Um, and the woman converted to Islam after marrying a Muslim man, right? But she had, bec she, she, first of all, I have the first, I mean, there's, I, I have 10 questions at least. Um, the man is trying to judge a picture of his own wife in bikini. Isn't that an Islamic for the judge to see? Shouldn't be the judge be like, Should what? He? Why am I why am I looking at your wife in bikini? You, you know, you're showing your uncovered pictures of a woman to me. Isn't that is this is in Saudi Arabia? Isn't that like a crime? Like uh, why are you showing me these pictures? Like isn't it isn't it like I think if it, at least it, in, in Iran, I'm I'm not sure actually. These a lot of people a lot of these people are hypocrites. But I think what what if they wanted to be Islamic, they would be like, "Hey, don't show this to me. Let's bring a woman here that could watch it, and she could describe to me what she saw, right?" And that could be a crime. Well, it could be a woman because that has to be testimony from a man. Remember? No, you can have every every for. You need to have two women to co for to for, so. The for every one man, you need two woman. women. For two women. Yeah, yeah. So the value of the test, you have to bring in a group of women. What? Because one man said that his wife was in a bikini, so you'd need at least two women to right. say 
Okay, yeah, he's right. Yeah, so the, the this is actually not even in the Hadith. This is in the Quran, right? So the testimony of a woman is worth half of a testimony of a man. Because women are uh, not intelligent, as intelligent as men, according to Islam. So, to, right. so you need you need two women to be able to have that uh, to to make it more reliable. Actually, the the, <laughs> the reasoning for why you need two women is given in the is given in the hadith, but the the fact that you need two women for um, is mentioned in the Quran. So this is this is for right. all Muslims. Okay, so um, so f so. <laughs> So, and then like, okay, so you lose custody because you're in a bikini. And she's like, so he ch believes the man, but when he said like, I, this was before I was a Muslim, he's like, well, says who? Says you? Where's your, <laughs> where's it? It's so weird. That's, I, Yuri, that's exactly what I said to her when she went before the court and said, so how far take me. before we were married, he said, you need a man to testify that for you. This is a very screwed up system. Like, you know how many, how easy I, easily I could abuse women um, randomly in Saudi Arabia if this is the standard? Like, I could get me and my f five buddies to go make an accusation against, like, you, Ali, if, I, if me and you were living in Saudi Arabia. I could just get five of my buddies and, uh, and myself to make a testimony against you. And now you have to go find 12 women. You have to go yep. find 12 women to defend yourself. And if you can't find 12 women, I win my accusations. <laughs> so, this is really crazy. Or oh, actually, no, maybe you could go find men, but good luck with that. I could, I could go find, I could go find seven men. Seven right? men. How could you? You can't even walk around without a guardian. So good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> Trap. You're trapped. Uh, but then oh. the next stage is like, well, the, okay, this is another part that I don't understand. The woman said like, hey, my, here's a video of my husband saying an Islamic shit, cursing Allah. Isn't that punishable by death in Saudi Arabia? Absolutely, it's punishable by death. So the husband said, she gave me those drugs and she filmed me and told me to say those things. Oh. And they believed him. <laughs> What the hell? They believed him at some level, but they said the fact that this woman could do this, and you would just be like, okay, honey, here I go, I'm gonna they do it. Uh, clearly, the child isn't good in your hands either. Okay. Oh. Gee, okay, that's amazing. By the way, this woman was going all out, because when, when if she was showing that video to the judge, she was not gonna, like, what she was doing, she must have known that this is not just gonna... This is not just an attempt to get her daughter. This is also might actually end up killing the husband, the father. Like she's accusing him of blasphemy. So she was like, right. "I don't give a fuck. Look, look at this judge." And the judge was like, "You drugged him to say that. This is like yeah. insane. This should be a movie. I and mean, this is like a comedy. Like I don't understand." This is so. By the way, like she had had the New York Times write about her before. Uh, to help in this case, um, and this is the second time they're writing about her now, to help in her custody case. Mm. Um, but yeah, so she, this, she's not, this this story isn't new necessarily. This part of the story is, um, but she, she wasn't able to leave Saudi Arabia because once the divorce went through, she didn't have citizenship there. So she didn't have access to bank accounts. She didn't have access to anything. She had no rights, and she was stuck in Saudi Arabia. So when the New York Times wrote about her situation then, the Saudi Arabian government uh, gave her the citizenship she needed to get access to her bank accounts again um, and get a place to stay. So now they're writing about her again over this custody case. So wait, I don't, one, thing, one part of the story I don't understand. If they didn't believe the husband that he like he was like oh I was drugged with weed by the way he was smoking weed like I don't I didn't know weed can do that to you that you end up blaspheming right. but, but I think the, <laughs> this is why the, the judge doesn't understand the difference between LSD and weed and stuff like that but the if if he's claiming that he was drugged and it wasn't his fault then why did he lose custody of it of the daughter because if a woman if a woman was able to give him drugs and make him on tape say this stuff mm. clearly that guy's unfit i mean it's fine that it's his wife's fault that he did it but 
the poor you daughter, by the way. doing that. See, the poor daughter, like, had a chance to, like, get out of that shithole and come living in the United States, and now she's stuck in the United States, isn't she? Oh, she's gonna be stuck in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Oh, so, sorry, stuck in Saudi Arabia. What a... The diff what a huge difference to her life this is going to be. Like she had a chance of getting out of hell, and now the, f the now he's she's been condemned to live a life in fucking the worst place to be a woman. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.